In this video, I'll be demonstrating a new free open source utility I've created that allows you to wirelessly download images and videos from your Wi-Fi equipped Nikon camera. The utility is called AirNef and it runs on the Windows, Mac, and Linux operating systems. AirNef is targeted mostly to Nikon owners because unlike Canon, Nikon doesn't provide a utility for wirelessly transferring images to your computer. But AirNef also works with Canon cameras and has a few features you may find useful that aren't supported in Canon's EOS utility. AirNef includes both a graphical interface and a command line application. The graphical interface uses the command line app to perform downloads based on the criteria you specify. You can optionally use the command line app directly if you'd like to automate or script your downloads. Here is the first window, where you can decide on the basic method for choosing images. You can either select files visually in your camera's menu system, or based on a set of criteria within the AirNef app. I'll demonstrate the camera selection method first. For the Nikon D7200 I'm using, the fastest option for selecting files is within the Wi-Fi menu. Notice that the menu says Select to Send to Smart Device. This is because the protocol that AirNef uses to transfer images is primarily used by cameras for transferring to smartphones and tablets. In a sense, AirNef is emulating a smart device. I'm using the multi-selector to browse through the images on the camera. For the D7200, the zoom out button is used to select a file. You can also zoom in to get a larger version of the image to evaluate. Here I've selected a few RAW files and a JPEG. Some models have limitations about which files you can select in the camera. For example, the D7200 won't let you select video files, and the more consumer-oriented Nikon J4 will only let you select JPEGs. But don't worry, all these files can be downloaded when you use the criteria method I'll be showing you next. Besides this dedicated selection menu, the D7200 also lets you select images in the normal playback menu. Press the I button on the camera while reviewing an image, and you'll get an option to toggle the download selection. What's nice is that the selections are remembered across camera powered cycles. So you can incorporate this into your shooting workflow to select images you like as you take them. Then when you're done with your shooting, you can upload all your favorite images at once using AirNef. I'll go ahead and turn the camera's Wi-Fi on. I have my Windows 7 machine configured to automatically switch to my camera's network when it becomes available. You can do this by placing it at the top of the priority list in the network sharing area and then configuring your main wireless network to switch to a more preferred network when available. I have detailed instructions about this procedure on the website. Now that we're connected to the camera's network, it only takes a single button click within AirNef to transfer those selected files to your computer. Before doing so, you can optionally set which directory you'd like to store the images in. I'll go ahead and select my directory now. You don't want to use this Windows default here since the application directory is not writable and so your images will be placed in the Windows Virtual Vault instead. You can also tell AirNef what it should do if it encounters any files on your system with the same name as the ones you've selected to download. By default, AirNef will create a unique file name for any incoming files whose names conflict with existing files. Let's go ahead and download the files. After clicking download, AirNef will launch its command line application and pass it the parameters you specified in the graphical interface. The command line app then does all the work. It'll establish a transfer session with the camera, then download information about the files that you've selected in the camera. Then it'll actually do the download. As each file completes, AirNef will report the average transfer rate achieved. I've carefully designed AirNef to use optimal transfer and buffering methods to get the maximum transfer rate from your camera. I usually see around 2.5 megabytes a second from my camera when it's near the computer, and this translates to about 10 seconds per raw file on my D7200. The downloads are running slower here because the application I'm using to capture this demo slows down my system significantly. Performance will vary based upon your system's Wi-Fi and how far away it is from the camera. Here you can see the transfer is complete, after which the graphical interface shows you a transfer report of each file downloaded and the average transfer rate achieved for the entire session. Here are the files I selected in the camera, now on my system. As AirNef downloaded each file, it removed it from the camera's transfer list, so that if you were to repeat the download, you'd see that there's no files left to transfer. Note that the files are still on the camera, they've only been removed from its download list. Selecting images on a camera is useful when you'd like to visually choose which files to download, but the process can be time consuming when you have a lot of images to select. And as indicated, some models limit the type of files you can select for download within the camera's menu system. If we go back to the main menu and click Select in Computer, we'll see the second method available for selecting files to download. Unlike the first method where AirNef will only download images you selected in a camera, this method allows you to download all files on the camera. And this is the default, to download every file. You can then optionally modify that criteria in this window to limit which of those files are downloaded. 
In this first option, you can choose to download small or large thumbnails of the images and videos instead of the actual files. Since these thumbnails are small, they download very quickly and you can use this feature to get a quick visual glimpse of what's on the camera. Here you can set which types of files are downloaded. The default is every type. You can then uncheck types you want to exclude. If you don't see a type listed that your camera supports, you can type it here in this entry box. Just specify the extension of the file type you'd like to download. The next set of criteria you can apply is to specific capture dates. You can choose either from one of these pre-selected choices like today or yesterday, or you can type a specific start and or end date. For example, if you'd like to only download files created on or after September 6th, you can type 090615. Be sure to include the full date including any leading zeros. You can use either a start date or an end date or a combination of the two. Here you can select which media card on the camera to download files from, in case you have a camera with two card slots like on a D7200 or D750. By default, AirNef will use the first populated card slot it finds. The last criteria I'll cover is one of AirNef's most powerful features. It's the ability to automatically skip images and videos you've already downloaded. And not just those you've downloaded in this session, but in all previous sessions as well, for the entire life that you've used the program. This allows you to keep using AirNef's one-click download feature without having to manually exclude files you've already downloaded. And this is my preferred workflow, to leave images on the camera even after I've transferred them to my computer, then taking new pictures until I'm close to running out of space on the card. That way I have a fail-safe interim backup on the camera in case anything happens to the images on my computer, or if I change my mind about an image that I thought I didn't want and deleted from my computer, but later decided to give another look. AirNef uniquely identifies files you've downloaded by the combination of their file name, capture time, and size. That way it won't get confused by duplicate file names when the camera's file counter resets or rolls over, or by the same file name existing in different camera folders. The download order isn't a criteria, but it does let you set the order in which the images are downloaded, either from the oldest first to the newest first. That way you can start working on the images you want immediately, rather than waiting for all of them to complete their downloads. There are a few additional criteria you can apply. To keep the interface uncluttered, I limited the options to what you see here. But if you look through the command line reference on my website, you'll see additional criteria you can use. You can type those extra options in the entry field here. With your preferred criteria set, you're now ready to download the images. If you'd like to first preview what will be downloaded, you can press this preview button, which will show you a directory listing of the files on the camera filtered by the criteria you've specified. This list will include files you've already downloaded, but those files will be skipped and not transferred when you commit to do the download. And now I'll start to transfer. I haven't excluded any files in my criteria, so AirNef will download everything except the files I've already downloaded, which in this case were the images I selected on the camera earlier and downloaded. So here we can see I have all the images in my specified output directory, including the video file that the D7200 wouldn't let me select in the camera. By default, the transfer report will not show files that AirNef skipped. If you ever want to know why certain files were skipped, you can set the logging level here to verbose during the transfer. This will cause AirNef to include an explanation about skipped files in its transfer report. And for files that are skipped because they were previously downloaded, AirNef will also report the original date the file was downloaded and what directory you downloaded it into, in case you forget when or where you downloaded those images. One last feature I'd like to demonstrate is AirNef's fault tolerance. I designed AirNef so that any errors occurring during downloads will automatically be retried, even in cases where the Wi-Fi network drops in the middle of a transfer. I did this for marginal Wi-Fi signal situations, such as when the camera is very far away from the computer. I also did it for computers that have Wi-Fi issues. For example, when I run Ubuntu on my laptop, the Wi-Fi connection drops intermittently, even though the Wi-Fi runs fine on Windows. With AirNef's fault tolerance, it will continuously retry any failed operations until it either completes the task you've given it, or until it encounters an error it believes it can't recover from, such as running out of disk space to hold your files, or until you manually cancel a transfer session by pressing Ctrl-C. I'll demonstrate default tolerance now. I'll transfer all the files on the camera. I'll go ahead and turn off the Skip Images I Previously Downloaded option so that AirNef will re-download the files we've already transferred in this demo. With the transfer at about 70%, I'll go ahead and turn the camera off. In a few seconds, AirNef will realize the camera is no longer communicating and report an error. It will then return to its initial discovery state and wait for the camera to become available again. In my experience testing with Nikon cameras, the session can usually be reestablished without you having to intervene on the camera. However, there are cases where the camera won't reconnect without you having to either toggle its Wi-Fi enable or less likely to cycle power on the camera. 
When such a scenario occurs, AirNav will try and tell you when it thinks the camera needs to be cycled. I'll go ahead and turn the camera back on. I have my window setup configured to automatically connect to the camera's network whenever it becomes available, which comes in especially useful for this fault tolerant feature because you won't have to manually connect to the camera's network again even if your system has already switched back to your normal home or work Wi-Fi network when the camera's Wi-Fi network went away. Now that we've connected to the camera's Wi-Fi again, you'll see AirNav re-establish its connection with the camera. Not only will AirNav resume transferring on the file that was interrupted, but it will resume exactly where it left off, even in the middle of the file. This is particularly useful for large downloads like video files, so you don't lose time waiting for data that was already transferred. This concludes my AirNav demonstration. You can download AirNav from my site at testcams.com slash AirNav. My site also has installation instructions for each operating system, plus additional tips and tricks I didn't cover in this video. It also contains a reference to the command line utility and information about how to contact me for support.